Chimmin's video. Smoothie right. cruise. Um, yeah. Because I know I'm going to forget. So, let's just, uh, oh, right, yeah. Okay, so let's do more cross-section. modify tab, when we come all the way down to deformations, what we want to do is fit. Um, so let's say we want this to be our top-down sort of view and this to be like our front view. Um, so because we want two different cross-sections, um, we need to unlock them so that we can get different shapes for different views. Um, so let's say for the top we do get shape and then we select this so you'll see that it's been moved to this can you rotate it uh, so depending on how you want that to be applied you can like rotate it um, for example this is now being like applied in this direction right mm -hmm. you can kind of see but it, it's this whole length is the length of your loft to begin with, which is why it looks kind of skewed. But you can rotate it. Now it's just I'll that. I like how we should have made our wings. There's that. Um, so you can draw the shape of the wings and then go curve around it. Mm -hmm. so. And then, well, I mean, this is how he made the wing in lecture, as an yeah, example. Yeah, I didn't really follow that. <laughs> can you put each shape in a different view and then? Yeah, it doesn't really matter where your sketches are. Um, and then let's say we want this to be front, so now we go to this other axis and we get the shape for that. Can you apply more than one surface? So, uh, we mean by that. What, so, for each direction that you're trying to apply a fit for, you can only insert one shape. So, like, this front view just kind of, now it looks kind of like that, right? Uh, so, um, keep in mind that um, your orientation of your fits, of your, the shapes that you're fitting to, will affect it. So make sure you line up. Sometimes you'll have a sharp edge on one, and if it's not lined up with how you want it to be oriented, like it could be flipped 180, even though it looks kind of similar, but you might have a detail. So play around with the rotate. Other things is that um, this probably won't be an issue with your plane because you're drawing your cross sections to scale based off of an image. But in something like this, um, this length is defined by our loft, by however long I made my path. Um, but let's say I want it to actually be like this length. So, oh, I need to select the lock, and I go to fit, um, and then for this shape, which one, it was this, you do generate path, and now it scales it to actually, like, the shape, the shape that you chose. Um, some important things to, like, kind of remember is, like, this, so this thing doesn't, it's not very intuitive. Like it might look like this is your shape, and but how it looks here, it looks pretty good here. But what this actually means is like it's on a scale of 100 and 100, negative 100. This is sort of the length of your path. Um, so do you remember in like the scale and the twist, like you can adjust like how much it's scaled. This with the fit thing, you probably shouldn't play around with the individual points. But this is just telling you like. It's some portions it needed to make it bigger from its original like loft versus in some places it needed to make it smaller. And so it d just so you know, it doesn't correlate with what you might think of me being. So you're saying like if you make this smaller, it's not gonna be smaller yeah. there, like it won't become thinner. Not necessarily. Uh, yeah. What was he do wasn't he like manipulating these um, 
points, like he made it into a curve or something in here, or was it, was I mistaken? That, yeah, I, yes. I think he did that. That was for, okay. So we're back at our original loft, right? Okay. Um, so that was in the scale deformation right here. Um, so what he actually did, so this is like along the length of your path. Um, remember we started, so that's our zero because we started there. So this will scale that end. Um, yeah? And then he can add more points, And then right? you can add, so let's say <coughs> I want something 50 approximately 50% along the way, then I can scale this section. But you see how it's like straight, this um, sort of scale? Yeah. If you change that to like a smooth, you can affect like how it scales. Oh, I see. Yeah. And you can move that as well. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, anything else? Clarification. How did you pick the shape that it uses to get that? Did you just change the axis that you're looking at. Oh the yeah. Shape that it. So shows. remember you, you had two different triangles. You get polygon. To oh. make the length to appropriate. Oh, okay. How did it know which shape to pull the mm -hmm. So it's kind of finicky sometimes. Um, so if you have already... <laughs> <laughs> we have a video. All right, so let's say we've gotten like two shapes. So sometimes it's a little finicky when you've already applied like two shapes for a fit and you just hit... Um, technically it should be on whichever one you're, you've selected, mm -hmm. but that's not so always the case. Them. Um, <laughs> so that's not always the case. So, but the way to like force it would be like just only apply one fit and then do the get path, the generate path. I think I control Z too many times. But um, so the way to force it would be to just fit it to one shape and then do the generate path and then fit it to the other shape. Yeah. Clarification. So once we're out of loft, we can't go back in to do this? <laughs> no. So, that, so, once so we should probably draw out every shape that we want before we do the loft, right? Like, draw out all those shapes, everything yeah. that we want before we do the loft. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh... So once you... I mean, you can loft and then, like, let's say I just had this to this, just that straight thing. Okay. Um, and then, if it's still a loft, you can draw these shapes after the fact and then go in and apply a fit. But as long as your object that you're trying to modify is still like a lot. So once I go into um, edit the whole, uh, uh, the whole poly. poly or something, you can't go back. You can't, yeah. Then now, like when you're in this curve, it has all these options to modify a polygon instead of editing a lot. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Can you also show how to use the text? Sure. For colors, right? Yeah. So let's say this is our law. Or, okay. It's like there's no like really easy resource to like go for now. It's just like you show it to you and then YouTube's pretty terrible. If you forget, then you're yeah. screwed. <laughs> video. <laughs> did you take video of Blue's class too? No, no, I wish I did. So. I was thinking of it this morning. Bring a camera to class. Yeah. Because kind of nice. Yeah. And the first time around, you're just like. Because I was looking at what he was doing and then looking at my screen. And exactly. And then, yeah. and then once you look at your yeah. screen, he's already like 10 steps ahead. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this is just our like extrude, right? Um, so we go out to twist. And so this is once again like the length and this direction, the length of our path. So um, if we want the twist to be applied across the whole path, that's how we go to the end and then we can adjust the amount of twist. That's right. beautiful. Or you can also add in a <laughs> corner point. Compared to mine manually. You can add a corner point, so if you only want the twist to start from like around 40%, <coughs> and then you need to adjust that. So it only starts twisting from 40%. <laughs> yeah. And what 
happens if you apply the thing to make it smooth? on each side how much the twist is applied.